Good evening, everybody. It's Brad Hughes and Ray Hewart with you live on the Sunday weekly warm up, streaming exclusively in the Teach Better group on Facebook and later streaming on, replaying on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and it magically becomes an episode of the Teach Better Talk podcast. Ray Hewart is with us, and our special guest, Trey Gamage, is in the house tonight. We are ready to talk teaching, get everyone ready for a wonderful week ahead in education, whatever your important role may be, hearing from Trey and getting to know this incredible guest, and of course, the usual Teach Better shenanigans. Ray, are you ready to hit us up with our uh, intro? I am so ready. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome in, everybody. It's the Sunday Weekly Warm-Up, our weekly opportunity to get everyone ready for a wonderful week ahead in education. It's our Sunday tradition here in the teachbettergroup.com, exclusively for members of our Teach Better group. Ray Hewart, let us know how you are, where you are, and how fun your weekend was. Okay, it is always a good day when Trey is in the house, and I yeah. love that Trey's pretending not to be ready. He just had to get up and go get a computer charger. He's doing this to mess with us because I've heard Trey speak. He's a part of our speakers network. I'm just so excited to talk shop, but I would love to dive into weekend plans. I had a great weekend, but before I do that, Trey, how are you? Mm -hmm. How's life? Life is good. I'm feeling good. I, I had to go grab my my cup of water to match my shirt as well and the teach better green of course in this holiday season so i'm feeling good and so glad of y'all to join me and, and make sure we're ready for the week well i know that we all should catch up about our weekend plans because it's been a while since we've all been together we were all together at the teach better conference but it's good to catch up before we do that a lot of our friends in our private group i assume already know brad and i but trey in case somebody's connecting with you for the first time would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself for sure. I'm Trey Gamage. I'm an education consultant and I'm heavily focused on adult SEL. I think it doesn't make sense to really support students if we're not impacting teachers. Mm -hmm. um, you can flip those words to make them fit how you want to. But I love serving students and I love serving adults. I live in Columbia, South Carolina, and I've been in education for like seven years and uh, doing things with the Teach Better team for like three or four years now. I love it. Brad, I know that we are like getting, to, we are always excited to work with Trey behind the scenes, we have a part of our speakers network. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you're an OG now, Trey. I mean, we have new speakers coming in and out all the time, but you're like pretty much an OG in that clan. Hey, I'll take it between, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I, I, I on a humbug found out about Jeff and then learned about Ray and learned about all the teach better things. So uh, it's definitely been gracious. I, I think I'm with the, the teach better or the speaker network. I was one of the first members on the podcast network as well, and right. also on the blog network. A little, little, little shy on the blog network, but I've gotten a couple of posts out there as well. It sounds like you do too much with the Teach Better team. I think is there. I don't think there's a group you're not a part of. It sounds like. Oh <laughs> uh, well, you know, and I don't mean to make it a lesson, but I think part of it is accountability. Accountability, you know, and just being able to say, hey, like, hey, I got to get this content to teach better as a solopreneur, as a content creator. It's nice to have, you know, just somebody that I have to follow up with. Like, oh, man, I told I told Livia that I was going to submit a blog. That was last month. Let me make sure I submit my blog here. Um, you know, whatever the case may be. It's funny. We were just uh, Brad. I know that you weren't able to join our blog meeting this month, but the team that meets our blog department is like just wonderful. Obviously, you yep. know this, but they had just had a conversation about accountability and trying to find a balance of wanting to support people by providing them some accountability, but also knowing that as educators, we love you for who you are, come as you are, you know, like you can be late on things. And it was just so interesting you said that because that was truly a conversation they just yeah, had. So. It, it makes sense. I mean, obviously we all have full plates, but um, when you sit back and look, you know, I think writing for me in particular is something that's uh, kind of relaxing. One of the first things that I did to help me start getting my mind right and prepared to be an educator. So it is cool to be able to, to write things and give back in that way. So little nudges are always, always good there. I think you're right, though. It's a fine line. Um, but I think you all have such a reputation 
you know, that, that nobody's going to see it as pushy, uh, but, but accountability, which is what we need. And it's accountability it. plus grace. And this is one of the things that I've always yeah. loved about being a Teach Better team member, but also being, you know, getting to connected with the Teach Better family tray is like you. There's there's tremendous respect and support for educators' busy lives. And the Teach Better team is all about welcoming and celebrating the contributions that we have the capacity to make. And as you're making those contributions, like I got to know you a little bit better at the uh, Teach Better conference and certainly through all of your work. And I'm wondering how you continue to grow as an educator and as a creator through the work that you do. Yeah, Brad, I mean, thank you. And, and it was a joy getting that refresher at the Teach Better conference. Now, I'm, I'm excited to kind of dig into it and, and I can go on some tangents. So I'm going to try to do like piece by piece. But I'll say this. I see my um, my massage chairs laying crooked yep. over here in the morning. The first thing that I really like to do in the mornings when I set my timer is I, I just come straight to my office. I sit in that massage chair. And sometimes I just sit down. I might play a game of uh, chess.com, but that's where I really sit mm -hmm. in, sit down. I set the timer on like 15 minutes. I look at my uh, planner, which is always near. Yeah. And and I just look at my day. Um, as I mentioned to you all, I, I recognize that I miss a lot of meetings. And so I check my calendar consistently and daily. And sometimes stuff will, will sneak up on me later in the evening and I'll, I'll forget that happened. But sitting there in that chair early in the morning, um, hopefully my son doesn't wake up and, and taking my time to think through my day and honestly try to tackle the first priority before I, I leave the house or the sun comes up. Yeah. You know, I think we're always looking for actions, actionable strategies to help us be a little bit better. I know there's going to be so many already in the show, but that one suggestion of setting a timer when you're doing self-care mm -hmm. is such a wonderful suggestion because it gives you peace of mind. We all have such busy schedules. 15 minutes is your safety zone to say, I have 15 minutes. I will end on time. I have a timer set so I can truly soak up and enjoy this time. Love that suggestion. Already going to be a good conversation, I can tell. Yeah, I think a, a couple of basic ones, too, just as we, you know, I'm not going to get too far on my tangent, but... Part of that process, one, leave your phone. You know, you, you don't you don't always need your phone. I, I'll try to set my timer and put the phone on a different side of the room or I actually have timers set up on my computer. So when I am working, I can try to work distraction free and then use the phone as the reward. Um, the, the other option, I know some folks may not have time in the morning. Some days my son wakes up before I do. And that, hey, that's just that's just what it is. So thinking about your way to work, how do you use your car as your university and even just turn the radio off, not mm -hmm. even listen to anything in the car, but take that time to be your moment um, to pause and reflect and think forward or reflect on uh, what's what's already happened in the day. I love it. This is going to be so good. Before we get too far into our educational conversations, I want to encourage you all to head to teachbetter.com slash speakers network or teachbetter.com slash podcast. Go find Trey. Go follow him on all social media. He's full of this stuff, not only on this show, but also on social media. He shares and shares and shares constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, before we transition, Brad, I'd love to hear about everyone's weekend. How was your weekend? I had a great birthday weekend. I turned 52. Yeah. Weekend. 52nd birthday on Saturday, wow. and uh, I got the best Christmas or best uh, birthday card from uh, the Teach Better family on all the socials. My birthday card was on all the socials, and wow. I got lots of birthday wishes from everybody uh, that's connected with me through Teach Better. So uh, I had a wonderful weekend. You know, I haven't had a Saturday birthday, I think, in seven years. And so uh, a birthday <laughs> on a weekend was just a wonderful way to celebrate and and uh, wonderful weekend. Uh, just trying to, you know, relax and, and refresh. And, and part of the, you know, our, our approach here on Sunday warm up is just to try to get into that right headspace and heart space for the week ahead. So I had a wonderful weekend. Trey, I would love to hear about your weekend as well. And in the comments, if you're live with us, we love that you're already commenting. Hello, with all the messages, make sure to tell us how was your weekend? Give us mm -hmm. a little like one liner. What was the, what was the best part of your weekend? We'd love to hear it. Trey, what about you? For me, it was being home. I spent the week or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in Atlanta um, at a conference and, and got to see my brother and my cousin and two cousins, actually. So it was wonderful in Atlanta. But uh, coming back home to see my family and, and relax yesterday, there was some really good championship college football games on yesterday. Um, the same with the NFL today. So I'm trying to slow down and just enjoy a little bit of games. You know, how about you, Ray? Love it. 
you know, my weekend was super busy, but was it couldn't have been more fulfilling. I celebrated a sixth birthday party for three days straight, which was an epic celebration. <laughs> Lots of great photos and videos from that. And then to be honest, uh, I totally played hooky today. I drove down to Bloomington, Illinois to see a few of our friends from the Teach Better team. I saw Katie Miglin and Sarah Jesse and Nikki Fiercey for the Bloggers Network. Um, just needed some good R and R with some good friend time. So I, I covered all my bases this weekend. I'm ready for an epic week. That's good. I like it. So fun, Brad. I know we have a lot to dive into. So should we get into this discussion of some strategies? I'm really looking forward to it. All right, let's do it. Welcome back, Teach Better family. It's Brad Hughes, Ray Hewart, and our guest, Trey Gamage, in the Sunday weekly warm-up space, your weekly opportunity to come together, get ready for your important week ahead in education, no matter what your role may be, a chance to catch up with the Teach Better team and get to know great folks like Trey. And Trey and Ray, before the break, we were diving into conversation, and we were talking about connecting and staying connected through those important uh, family and personal and professional relationships. And and Trey, as a, as a busy guy and as a busy dad, I'm wondering how you're able to, you know, continue to prioritize the important relationships in your life that that restore you and, and to keep you going. Uh, great question, Brad. Thanks for asking. And, and I forgot to say happy birthday a moment ago, too. Um, you know, I think uh, structure is is a, is a big thing. I actually talked to, to Tim Shimmer on his podcast at mm. the uh, Teach Better Network, and we kind of broke down the day. But just simply put, you know, I think about, I like to chunk things. And so I like to sleep about six hours. Uh, and then the first thing I do after my sleep is I block out my family time. So you'll see in my daily, weekly calendar from about six to about 7.30, it says Marcy time. And that's mm -hmm. my son's nickname. So whenever he wakes up to the time I go to take him to school, that's my time for him. And then from the time that he gets home to the time that he goes to bed, that's my time for family. And so like now, eight o'clock, that's my end time. So I'm able to yep. be here and, and take care of this. My wife is getting him to bed. Um, and so so that's some some simple structures that I like to put in place. And then I have like a go to kind of the dream team or mastermind team, if you will, of about four or five uh, guys and ladies that I can just pick up the phone and call and say, hey, what's going on? Here's what's happening. And that includes the, the uh, podcast network. We have a podcast channel where if you've got questions or ideas, you just toss them in there um, and somebody will respond back. Even if you have I shared something yesterday and it happened to be helpful for some others. I just happen to be up late and thinking about it. Hey, you know, let's let's do this. So finding ways to, to make it easy and, and almost plan that family time so it doesn't get forgotten about, but still leaving room for a structure and flexibility for sure. You know, Trey, what I really value about your suggestion right off the bat of, of finding people to reach out to when you have the time for support, that Voxer group that the Teach Better Podcast Network has is something that only sustains itself because mm -hmm. of the dedication of the people in the group all looking for that. Everyone in that group is looking to share and learn and be better. I'm seeing Brad very similar in the comments today with people that intentionally choose to say, okay, Sunday evenings. I'm going to come and hang out in the chat of the Sunday weekly mm -hmm. warm up. And that's another opportunity to say, yeah. this is scheduled time for me to collaborate and say hi to people in my network. I'm seeing a lot of similarities of making it an intentional time. So, you know, that you can utilize it, you know, when those needs come up. Yeah. I'm thinking too, say, oh, go ahead, Brad. I'm sorry. No, Trey, over to you. I was just going to say, you know, you hear people, um, sometimes it sounds corny to think about planning family time or planning this and that, but what gets planned for gets done, you know, and, and it may seem like basic or, or simple or how do you not remember to spend time with your family? But it's not a fact of remembering. It's a, it's a fact of prioritizing. Couldn't agree more. I mean, the prioritizing makes sure that uh, the things that are most important to you and the people that are most important to you are top of mind. And, and prioritizing means that you give that gift of time and connection and, and, and it's reciprocated back. I mean, the relationships in our lives are, are among the most important restorative and protective measures, especially for, you know, busy folks in, in complicated mm -hmm. and challenging walks of life. And so it also is a gift of time to others. When you prioritize others, 
by saying, hey, you're important to me. This connection is important. We want to make sure that we maintain it and grow it. And let's face it, when we're stressed, it, it is easy to put those blinders on and kind of close close in on oneself. And I, I've experienced that myself. And it's recognizing that those connections that are sustaining and those those folks that are just really there for you, no questions asked, are, are so, so important. Ray, what's mm -hmm. coming to mind for you? You know, I think it's interesting. I'm I'm learning this balance. I actually think I just sent out an email about trying to find this balance in myself of not just fully identifying myself as a workaholic. I, I wear that label quite proudly. And I know people have been critical for years to say, no, you need more depth in your life. And I'm like, no, guys, I'm happy. I love working 24 seven. And this is a new phase of life for me that I'm very much enjoying putting my phone away. I'm very mm. much enjoying scheduled family time that I will fight tooth and nail to make sure stays consistent on my calendar. And I understand, yeah. I feel like finally some recognition of the guilt that some people feel in making those choices. Mm. But I think it's so appropriate to reiterate the importance of making the choice for yourself to make that a consistent norm. That's good. Ray, I, I know you work with specifically adult adults more often than not. And I think that yeah. when you say you work with adults with SEL practices, people are confused by putting those two terms together. We talk about mm. SEL all the time, but it's yeah. always related to our kids. So will you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it this way, when you, <clears throat> if you were to go teach any subject in the classroom, math, reading, science, mm -hmm social studies, any other class, you take multiple courses to be able to prepare yourself to teach that class or implement that curriculum. But too often in schools, and when you look at the most prominent SEL implementation plans, you pick your curriculum, you roll it out, and then you train your adults. That's backwards. You, you, don't, you don't put a teacher in a classroom and tell them you're teaching math and then teach them how to, to deliver the skills. You know, we have to teach and develop the skills first. And so from my research and the research of others, there isn't any teacher prep or um, like graduation or certification programs that really talk about adult SEL. And when you think about it like this, we teach who we are in the classroom. So if I have bias, implicit or explicit, mm -hmm. if I have unhealed traumas and hurts, and I'm not self-aware, I've worked with 30-year veteran teachers who didn't realize they were a leader. Mm -hmm. 20 students a year in your class that you are raising up for another generation, and you didn't realize you were a leader. And I don't say that to fault you, but just to think about how much work we have to do to bring out all the strengths that we have living inside of us or the awareness personally or socially that we don't realize we need to have to impact a whole generation. Mm. So I think, I'm thinking, Trey, that uh, your investment in championing adult SEL, whether it's around setting boundaries or uh, turning compassion back on oneself or just recognizing the complexity of, 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 of the challenge of raising up those 25 young people each and every mm -hmm. year is such a worthy investment because we you know, can't pour from empty cups. Uh, and educators continue to be called to do more and more, uh, more and more challenging work with 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 communities and kids that are in need of connection, of reassurance and support. And I, I think of you know the pervasive community stress of the pandemic that we're mm. living through. I mean, uh, tell me about how you are able to work with others to help to grow that SEL, whether it's uh, intentional time or moment to moment yeah. conversations. What, what are your go-tos to build those capacities? Great question, Brad. I mean, you're, you made me think about a few things. Honestly, there's, there's two key components that I think really drove me deep into wanting to work with adults. And one is communication. And I recognized I was a Toastmaster. I was a world champion public uh -huh. speaker. And through that process, though, I recognized how much of what people say is lost in translation. Uh, for example, I spoke to a I spoke to a colleague and they said, man, now, Trey, you know, that person is messy. I said, really, they're messy. What does that mean? Now, Mr. Trey, you know what that means. Well, yeah, I know what it means to me, but tell me what it means to you, because we could have very different interpretations of that. And so a lot of times in arguments personally or professionally, I may say a trigger word to you, Ray, that mm -hmm. boils your blood. But to me, that's how my family jokes. And, and now we have some tension. We're not sure where it comes from. And we're arguing circles and circles because we didn't 
recognize what this one word meant. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so learn, go ahead, Ray, go ahead. I was say, did anyone else have that this week? Cause I did. <laughs> oh yeah. It happens. I mean, that's, that's regular. That's where most tension comes from. It's just not knowing the right words to say or the right way to say things. And the other piece is, is assets. And I had a chance right out of college to work on an asset based community development mm -hmm. project, which means that you take the talents, the tools, the resources that exist in a community to build it up, to strengthen it. And so the other one thing I do is teach communication skills. The other thing that I do is teach you how to maximize your assets. How do you recognize your strengths and turn and maximize them? Let's let's forget about the weaknesses a little bit, but mm -hmm. just focus on your strengths and do what you're the best at. And, and I like to do those two things through an assessment called DISC. And I have an emotional intelligence assessment that we use as well. So there's like full versions where you can take it and get a 40 page report. Um, but I also use like a self-paced version where um, you can just circle some boxes and, and figure out the right uh, domains that, that you fall in from a communication standpoint. You know, Brad, I'm thinking here, I know our community is very aware of wanting to be better in this space. I don't think that anyone very frequently feels like they've mastered this skill. Right I'm on. curious if we, before we continue with this dialogue, can challenge our our viewers right now participating in teachbettergroup.com every Sunday with us. If you wouldn't mind taking on a challenge, I'm going to throw you a little question. I'd love to have you throw your one sentence or thoughts in the comments real quick. Uh, I'd love to hear if you have a specific weak area as we get further into this dialogue. When we say SEL, do you have an area that you're like, yeah, I've always struggled with this personally. Maybe it's something that you tried to coach a student on that you're like, yeah, that kind of, I tried, but it like didn't work. I didn't, I did something wrong. Or if you're thinking for yourself, yeah, I don't do this, these things for myself very often. Here's where my hurdles exist. Um, you know, I identified one earlier as like guilt and not taking time mm -hmm. for yourself off of guilt. Um, we'd love to hear those in the comments. We'd love to have Trey maybe address some of those. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's good. I, I would say, um, you know, just just being myself transparent, I, I think something I've been focused on is self-management. And, and that's the, the recognizing of mm. basically discipline, self-control and discipline. Um, I tend to, by nature to be an indulgent person. I made some cookies yesterday and they're about to be gone tonight. So I have to learn my own <laughs> self-control there. Um, and also like discipline, like I mentioned in the morning, sitting in that chair well, sometimes, being frank, sometimes I'll sit in that chair and I'm still tired. And instead of just turning on my timer, the Instagram button will open up and I get to scrolling and I have to catch myself. So I'm up on time. I'm sitting in my chair. But am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Or, or I'm, I'm at my desk. I've got my timer on. But I heard the vibration of my phone. Am I going to go grab it or am I going to, to stick to my discipline? Mm -hmm. And so I think consistency is one thing. But discipline is another level. And so I think from a self-awareness standpoint, I'm, I'm very consistent in my routines and my practices, but I can be more disciplined at following through on some of those practices as well. And it's a good reflection unless you are scrolling through the Teach Better Team's Instagram or Brad's Instagram. And then it's like, well, no. <laughs> and it's OK. that If, if it's Teach Better or if it's Brad, then it's OK. It's all it's all time very well spent. And, and it's also about recognizing that we're in a constant, uh, constantly striving for growth. And we want to be forgiving of ourselves and maybe even just have a little chuckle and just say, you know, wow, I really got off track there. I'm going to get myself mm -hmm. back on track rather than, you know, jumping back into where we need to be. Just making those gentle course corrections and recognizing that we're going to all find our way back to the middle at some point. But just being forgiving of ourselves and as graceful with ourselves as we would with a loved one or a good friend. You know, but it, it is interesting because we have a, a group of, you know, 7,000 plus educators in the Teach Better private group on Facebook. There's very slow commenting right now. And I think it's interesting because I don't think that our network is unwilling to, to identify the hurdles or the struggles that they are personally having with SEL. I think some of it as it comes in, of course, some of them could be long responses and that's why it's taking a second. So, you, you know, ignore me if that's you. But some of it also is a self-awareness, like a need mm -hmm. to reflect and say, actually, I don't know what I'm not good at in this area. And I think this is something that is challenging. I know it's challenging for me. And it's not because I think I'm good at it. It's because I probably don't take enough time 
to better understand yeah. how I can improve. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there, there's intentional practice that comes with it. I, um, there's a guy named uh, Wayne Dwyer, and he has a, a audio cassette tape called The Power of Intention. And, and that's what I say with SEL. We practice SEL daily. I mean, school is a social place. People are emotional beings. So we're going to practice. We're going to rehearse these things. But are we going to do it with intention? And the intentionality is, is where things come into place. And so, Ray, to your point, like if you have a hard time thinking of it, then the answer is self-awareness. You know, and, and the, the basic way I hear folks, uh, somebody said using a planner to keep myself on track, a lot of scrolling for fun, just writing and saying like, hey, like, what do I struggle with? Where am I weak at? Or um, I, I heard somebody say before, the places that you're resistant, when you wake up in the morning and you think about the things you resist, I've been putting off uh, like editing one of my podcast episodes. And last night I was like, Trey, just get it done because this is going to free up two weeks of your time. And, and sometimes it's just knowing the thing that you have to do and getting it done uh, to be able to follow through. And what you're resisting is probably what you should prioritize interesting perspective gosh mm -hmm. i need to sit down after this and be like ray what have you been resisting on your to-do list i'm gonna put that top of my list <laughs> this will be a special extended edition of the sunday weekly warm-up just with trey and ray just uh, just just getting <laughs> things sorted out i know trey do you mind if i go through everything on my to-do list you can tell me what's to do first <laughs> let's talk about it let's talk about it it's, it's the resistance so like i mentioned um and i see olivia read the book the power of intention by wayne dyer that's good. It's, so the guy, like some folks, there's different ways to meditate. And so the ways that I practice meditation, sometimes it's just closing my eyes and, and letting that massage rub my back. Um, but there's also like, a, I forgot what it's called, but like a river when you like just understand the thought and you let it flow right out of your mind. And yep. this guy that I talked to, he had a thought and he stuck with the thought to see if he was resistant to it. And like, ah, let me get this out of here. Oh, I don't want that thought. He, he thought about the thought, metacognition. And then the things that he was resistant to or didn't want to really address, he knew that that's what he needed to prioritize because that's probably going to be the biggest trigger or lever for you. Do any right, of you... So, so, go ahead, Ray. I just have a question, Brad or Trey. Do any of you ever feel like the things that you're resistant to often lead, like I more often than not I'm resistant because I think it's going to take so long. And then once I get it done, I was like, I actually didn't take that long to do. Did you ever find that? Yes. 100%. I think almost everything like that's mm -hmm. almost everything that I do is like, man, it's going to take two weeks. Mm -hmm. oh, it took four hours. Oh my goodness. How did that, how did that happen? Yeah. Like, I went the other day working on uh, actually working on a profile for an incredible speaker that just joined our speakers network. And Brad, I was so bad. I put it off. I'm like, oh, it's going to take so long. It took me like, I don't know, 15 minutes. Like it was, I don't know what the problem is. I've been doing some really cool reading about procrastination and uh, and listening to some some cool podcasts that, that help me to understand that it may not be the work that we avoid, the actual task. It, it might be the uncomfortable feelings around mm -hmm. those tasks, whether it's a difficult conversation you've been putting yeah. off or that sense of discomfort or Trey thinking about your podcast, it, it's maybe sense of, I don't know, like guilt or, or falling short mm. and we haven't gotten to it. So, you know, th this is what I'm working on is, is trying to identify the feelings around the things that I'm putting off or resisting that's and also good. trying not to get swept up by the feelings and getting them too sticky. Just, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that's what's coming up for me at this time and, and just taking it that way. Brad, I thought you were talking about me for a second. I mean, I think, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that you, you, that was super well-spoken um in the way that you spit it out I, I can think of so there's another saying feel the fear and do it anyway mm -hmm. or false evidence appearing real so um you i've heard it likened to giving birth and through a pregnancy that a woman goes through the most pain comes right before you give birth to the child and that moment where all the pain is that's where most of us get stuck and so like ah, man, i don't want to do this podcast it's going to take too long but once I finish editing, now I give birth to a new 30 minute project or a new 60 minute project that lives forever or that lives as far as it wants to, as far as I want it to. But there's that fear of, of doing it because what if I fail? What if I lose? What if it's not good? What if nobody listens? Whatever the case may be that that holds you back. And so most I, I'm cliche right now, most people live the same year 75 times and call it a life and, and you get stuck 
from of that one level and then you find that your glass ceiling and every time you get to that glass ceiling you just back up a couple steps and run your head into it again without really thinking about if there's another way to go through up over or around that wall well and i i to this point and i think this is a strategy that we can start using as early as tomorrow if mm -hmm. you can really take the time to identify what the fear is then you can ask for appropriate support. It doesn't mean yeah. that even you individually have to persevere through that, but at least if you know the, what the, what the core, you know, fear or you know concern is, then getting support for that one area seems much more obtainable versus trying to eat the whole elephant in one bite, right? Well, I'm thinking too how challenging it can be for any of us at any time to ask for help because there's always that there's always that uh, that sense that. If I'm asking for help, it must mean I'm not doing a great job or I haven't got my act together. I'm just going to pop a comment from Livy on there. and Maybe we can just shift, shift our thinking and, and shift the conversation to, you know, what can go right if I ask for help? That's what if point. asking for help indicates that uh, I know that I have a lot to accomplish and what I want to accomplish impacts kids? And it's all about impacting kids positively. So what 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 could go right if I ask for help? Maybe Maybe people would learn that it's okay to be vulnerable and not to have all the answers. Uh, maybe it's okay to model that for people that asking for help is a sign of uh, of strength uh, and that coming together uh, around difficult things is actually uh, uh, quite courageous and, and quite uh, liberating if you give yourself a chance to do it. Y'all are do, saying so many, so many gems in this Sunday warm up. My goodness, this is so good. So good. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I, I think, uh, yeah, just the thought. I think these are the types of things that that keep you motivated, that keep you grounded, and keep you ready to to move forward. So many good things here, Trey. I know that we have uh, weekly giggles we want to get to. We have some like good news that we always love to share, and it's so much better when Brad's here because he's the best at finding Aww. those funny little news articles. Before we get to that, I do want to make sure that we're able to leave our community here with a takeaway, and I know there's been so many already, but if you had one message that our group was gonna hear today that they really could put into action this week, really allow them to have a successful December ahead and you know, get rid of those Sunday scaries, really get excited for the week, what, would you, what idea would you wanna leave them with? Uh, I would say choose what your wins are gonna be. Hmm. And, and I, I, to add context without going in too deep, most people start the day without knowing what success will look like at the end. How do you know if you won the day? And if there's three, I, I don't set any more than three goals in a single day. Maybe there's more on my task, but there's three big priorities. So that way, when I go to bed at night, I know I won. And so find ways for you to win. If that's making your bed, brushing your teeth, that's easy victories for the day. Um, if it's if it's not cussing out your principal and being nice to the kids you can't stand in class, that's your win. But define what's going to make your day a success so that you don't go home feeling like you got nothing accomplished after you work 14 hours. Oof, I like that. And mm -hmm. then you can go to bed happy every day. You can go to bed happy. Yep. Did you what was can you give us one win you had today? One win that I had today. So Sundays are for plan, praise, and progress. So mm. plan is plan my week. I haven't done that yet. I'll do it tonight. Praise is go to church. I did that. And progress is get my workout in. So I got two out of three, and I'll get the third one once we get off the phone. Ooh, I like this. Brad, what were your wins for today? Uh, well, looking forward to and connecting with you and Trey is an absolute win. Uh, getting uh, my Monday and part of my Tuesday prepared in advance for uh, – uh, for back to school and back to uh, a great week in education and and also just uh, you know investing some time with uh, with my partner and family here at home and uh, just uh, doing things like crossword puzzles and reading that to kind of restore me and just kind of just seeing the light side of life today Ray has been really good. I like that yeah I think the wins for today was prepping the week got that done uh, going to Bloomington and surprising the girls which was successful and not having the dogs have an accident at home when I was doing that stuff. That was, that was kind of it. That's the win. No accident to clean up. I love it. We're going to head into our weekly giggles. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Trey Gamage, Ray Hewitt, and Brad Hughes with the Sunday Weekly Warm-Up. 
We are exclusively tonight in teachbettergroup.com on Facebook. Later on this week, uh, this replay will be available on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and it will magically become an episode of the Teach Better podcast. Ray, I'm not sure how that happens. Is there sort of like, I kind of think like a Willy Wonka machine where, you know, this is magically turned into an episode and it's brought, you know, podcast and distributed just wherever it goes? Yes, it magically happens. It will air on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern. So just same time, but one day later. And uh, the magical machine is called Rachel. She is on the Teach Better team and she makes everything happen. And uh, it's so funny. I think that's so, I, we were joking about this on another show a few weeks ago that people think that, you know, I don't know, Jeff Gargis does everything. And the reality mm. is that Rachel actually runs the team and she's the one that makes the content show up. So she's also the one that yelled at us, yells at us when we don't do our job. So, you know. I, I, I kind of wonder if Rachel is actually a supercomputer. Like the, the, the name Rachel is an acronym for like really awesome computer having electric lights or something. But it's a real person, right? It's, it's not a supercomputer that goes bleep, bleep, blorp and spits out we the got podcast. We That's got to meet her in person for the first time this summer, and I can tell you she's real. She's just really organized and and, wow. and successful and bossy. I love it. <laughs> bossy in a good way. In a good way. Yes. And thank y'all for all the love in the chat. I see Amy, Livia, Janelle enjoying some of the feedback that we're given as well. Indeed. So good. Brad, I know we have some, some giggles, some good stories. I love this segment because I love being able to allow our community to smile as we kind of head into a successful week. What do you think in here? Well, I was thinking about uh, and reflecting on our conversation tonight, Ray, with uh, with Trey and and talking about the importance of connections and communication uh, and uh, Trey comment on sort of the, some, the things that can be left unsaid or misunderstood. And I've got a story that comes out of Dallas, Texas tonight about uh, an incredible moment of connection and understanding uh, that took place at a Japanese restaurant. Uh, a, a patron who's actually a food reviewer and her partner are deaf and uh, emailed the restaurant Tatsu in Dallas to inform them uh, of their visit and wanting to get the full experience uh, because uh, at Tatsu, the, the chef would explain each dish and prior to the tasting menu would give a full explanation to the guests, to the patrons about how they could really benefit from their visit. So not only did the restaurant send uh the reviewer and her partner, the menu ahead of time to help them prepare for their visit. But when they finally arrived at the restaurant on the night of the reservation, the staff greeted them in American Sign Language. They were shown into their table by the chef who had also prepared and learned how to sign the entire wow. tasting menu for their guests. And so, you know, it makes me reflect on, you know, some, some good news, some good news out of Dallas here about, you know, uh, a chef going the extra mile with his staff and his team to make sure that his clients, his patrons were welcomed and, and able to really engage in, in the experience. And it reminds me too, Ray and Trey, of the power of kindness that we're sort of sharing out to, uh, to our school and faculty at this time. It's, we call it the power of free. I mean, you know, an act of kindness impacts you as the giver, it impacts the receiver of the kindness. And, and anybody that is in you know, anyone that witnesses an act of kindness, uh, whether it's they see it or they hear it, I think about the, the restaurant of patrons and, you know, maybe the delight or the expression of gratitude or relief uh, when the, when these guests were welcomed with ASL. I, I just think that uh, when we model how to treat others with love, care and respect, it really goes a long way, not just for ourselves and the people that we're involved with, but, but anybody that happens to see it. That's a wonderful story. That is. Talk about communication. I'm sensing a theme. Absolutely. Most communication is nonverbal. So, I mean, it is that's uh, that's kudos to them for making sure that they're taking care of the, the ASL community. And um, I think also just shows how you can communicate things without uh, being heard or being said. You know, that that one email was sent via message. But I'm sure that the, the experience that they received and requested, you talked about asking for help, um, is going to be a memory that that lasts a lifetime. Mm, so powerful so fun brad thanks for always preparing some good good stuff for us we, i love those pick-me-ups and i really appreciate your identification of the three people affected because even though we did not witness this story even hearing mm -hmm. it is positively affecting us that's such a wonderful opportunity here before we wrap up our show trey i would love to have our community here be able to connect with you 
would you mind sharing how they can get connected? Obviously, I shared earlier, they can get all your information over at teachbetter.com slash teachers network, and they can go see your podcast and the Teach Better podcast network, and they go read your blogs on the blog, but let's pretend they don't do any of that. Where can they find it? Um, you can go to at Trey Gamage on all social media, at SEL Educators for the consultancy and all the schoolwork. And I actually, Ray and Brad, just updated my personal website, TreyGamage.com as well. So you can just type in my name and you can find it in everything as well. Trey Gamage at TreyGamage.com, uh, Trey, or SEO Educators online and, and Trey Gamage everywhere else. So try to keep it easy. Try to keep Mine it easy. keep it easy. I love it. Brad, do you mind if we do some Teach Better reminders before we head out? I'm reminded that that would be a great idea. And I've just really enjoyed our conversation with Trey tonight, Ray, so rich and, and, and so full of value. And yeah, let's continue with those teacher better reminders. What's on your mind? All right, real quick. It is the month of December. So we want to encourage everybody to head over to continue to be a learner with the Teach Better community. We have our Tuesday mornings admin mastermind. Please go register at teachbetter.com slash mastermind. We will be asking everyone to re-register because we are do, launching a new and improved program as we continue into next year. So even if you're already on the list, just go over to teachbetter.com slash mastermind, plug in your information super quick. It's a free meeting every single Tuesday that will head into the new year with us of leadership teams getting together to talk shop and share ideas from all over the world. We also will, of course, continue our live shows and the incredible opportunities that the team continues to provide over at teachbetter.com, including podcasts and blogs and speakers network stuff and everything in between, including a new course coming out in a few weeks. I do want to give a quick reminder that if you frequent the Teach Better community, there will be some things that will be changing over winter break. So you might have some some mastermind meetings that don't happen or live shows that may not happen. So if you haven't subscribed to the Teach Better events calendar, that would be the easiest way to make sure you stay up to date on all of the fun. And then we still have some big announcements coming in terms of holiday deals and special live streams that we'll be previewing soon. So keep your eyes out. Brad, I think I covered everything, but didn't give any like details. You okay. exercised incredible restraint because I know behind the scenes what excitement there is not only for December and as we turn the calendar page to 2023, but plans coming together for some wonderful events and some wonderful opportunities for everybody associated with Teach Better Team, the Teach Better Family in the new year. So we're going to keep you informed as much as we can. And we just want to let you know that, uh, you know, our excitement for serving you and connecting you is, is real. And uh, we are really grateful that you're joining us here tonight in the Sunday weekly warm up space. And Trey, so grateful to you for taking time and sharing your expertise and your passion. Uh, your care and your love uh, for education and for your fellow person. Just really, really inspiring tonight. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Thank you all for all the love as usual. Love it. And then for anyone who might be thinking um, if you applied to be a Teach Better ambassador, we really appreciate that application. Remember that you will not be notified until after the new year. So don't stress. Don't keep refreshing your email. we got plenty of time. So uh, that will come at the, the top of the new year. We will see you next Sunday for our Sunday weekly warm up, and we wish you a wonderful week. Bye. -bye. Can't wait. <laughs>